most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, kicking off the series, we see our MC, Makoto, narrating his normal life, waking up and having breakfast with the family, heading to school and attending archery practice after school, only to head home have dinner, shower and read his father's newly released book. But when he closes his eyes, he is suddenly suspended in space, greeted by a glowing orb, which asks Makoto if he knows who they are. When Makoto shows off his confusion, the orb reveals that it is a god, and that Makoto will be reincarnated to another world immediately. When Makoto refuses, the orb reveals its true form, Sukuyomi, a god tasked with choosing a hero, and sending the hero to save a world. As Makoto asks more and more questions, Sukuyomi realizes that Makoto hasn't been told about his lineage. Sukuyomi reveals that Makoto's parents are both from other worlds, which surprisingly makes sense, as Makoto has never met any relatives. Wondering why he of all people is chosen, he learns that his parents had promised a god to give over one of their children, and knowing that he doesn't want his two sisters to be put in a tough situation, Makoto agrees to be chosen. Promising to deliver a message to his family whilst he's gone, Sukuyomi bestows divine power onto Makoto in preparation for his duties, but Makoto suddenly begins to disappear, as Sukuyomi warns Makoto to be patient with the goddess he's being summoned by, as she can be quite tough to deal with. Thanking Sukuyomi for the advice, Makoto appears before the goddess, blinded by her divine beauty. As the goddess tells Makoto about her world being invaded by demons and spirits, she insults Makoto for appearing so ugly. Not taking a liking to Makoto, the goddess demands that Makoto leave, but Makoto gets heated, prompting the goddess to show off her power. Knowing she'll be fine without Makoto's help, she sends Makoto to the edge of her world, where orcs and goblins reside, but out of pity, she grants Makoto the ability to speak, read and write any language in the world. Just like that, Makoto is flung through the sky of this new world, fearing that he'll die from such a height. Suddenly Sukuyomi appears, intercepting Makoto from falling further, and apologizing for the goddess's words, as he didn't expect her to outright reject Makoto. As good news, Sukuyomi reveals that the world he had grown up in, was far harsher on his body, compared to this new world, so Makoto doesn't need to worry about being weak, but he must still be wary, as he can still die. With Sukuyomi's spiritual body disappearing, Sukuyomi wishes Makoto the best, only to disappear, wishing to meet again in the future. With Sukuyomi no longer holding onto Makoto, Makoto falls from a height, but just as Sukuyomi predicted, Makoto is quite durable. Since Makoto has nowhere to go, he begins wandering around for three days, unable to find any humans, animals or food. As night falls, Makoto begins to feel lonely, crying out for anyone, only to hear cries for help in the distance, focusing in on the sound. Makoto darts in the direction of the sound seeing a pig girl and a two-headed dog about to devour the girl. Dashing at the creature, Makoto gives the dog a light kick, but unknowingly his kick tears off one of the dog's heads, killing it due to blood loss. Stopping the girl from running away from fear, Makoto introduces himself, showing the girl that he's not scary. As they chat, Makoto learns that he is currently in the wastelands, where no humans reside, and that the girl's name is Emma, a highland orc. Wondering if he can visit Emma's village, Emma reveals that she can't return home, as she's been nominated as a sacrifice. Apparently, her village has been plagued with fog, so her village has been offering sacrifices to Shen, as a means to stop the fog from interfering with their crop's need for sunlight. Thanking Makoto for saving her, Emma brings Makoto to a place where he can finally eat. Sharing the table with some boars, they both reveal how they heard humans are terrible people, but think Makoto is a demi-human as he is so ugly. Seeing Emma levitating some bowls, Makoto wonders what she is doing, to which she replies she is using simple transportation magic. Curious if he can learn magic, he asks Emma to show him a spell, where she begins channeling a spell, conjuring a fire in her hand. Going after her, Makoto shockingly mimics the fire spell, only to be instructed by Emma to imagine the fire as a ball, which causes Makoto to shoot the fire into a nearby wall. Amazed at how fast Makoto learned the spell, Emma asks about Makoto's level, bringing out a scroll, as a crowd gathers, believing Makoto is at least level 100. Upon touching the scroll, Emma announces Makoto is level 1, 
offering to teach him more magic, to cheer him up. The next morning, Emma wakes up, spotting a letter that Makoto had left behind. With the spells and equipment he had acquired yesterday, Makoto has set out to deal with this Shen creature, demanding sacrifices. Knowing he should at least warm up, Makoto is able to cast a fire spell without incantation. On top of that, by reshaping the spell in his head, Makoto is able to create a bow and arrow, firing off a single arrow that hits a target, exploding upon impact. Having not anticipated the massive explosion, Makoto realizes that there were some people he had accidentally blown up. As they talk to Makoto, he realizes that they are clearly bad guys, who feel sorry for Makoto, as he's destroyed Shen's property. As the bad guys perish, a red smoke begins to encase Makoto, who believes that Shen is meant to be a massive clam, like in the stories he's read, but here Shen is a dragon. Immediately dashing at Makoto, Makoto is barely able to dodge the dragon's movements, as the red mist is obscuring his vision. Encasing himself with magic, he begins to read the dragon's movements, dodging Shen's advances. Knowing that he can win, Makoto activates a hidden skill, allowing him to see Shen clearly, whilst casting several fireballs near Shen, who thinks nothing of Makoto's magic. But when struck by a single fireball, Shen sustains huge damage, wondering how fire could harm its fire-resistant body. With no time to think, Makoto sneaks in close, pummeling the dragon several times, Makoto brings the dragon to the ground. Believing the fight is over, Makoto drops his guard, allowing Shen to catch Makoto with some illusion magic. Brought back to his old life, Makoto is alone with Hasegawa, who suddenly confesses to him. Knowing that this is so strange, Makoto attempts to reject her, but is forced to accept her proposal to stop her from crying. After the confession is done, Makoto reveals that he knows this is all an illusion, as he reveals his hidden skill. Makoto can create a zone around himself, which allows him to manipulate the space, however he pleases. This means he can also enhance his body, whilst in the zone. Thanking Shen for making him stronger, Makoto breaks out of Shen's illusion spell, but realizes that Shen is no longer hostile. Apologizing for attacking Makoto, Shen asks that he form a contract with it, offering to be Makoto's companion, and in exchange Shen wants to see Makoto's memories from another world. Seeing as there is no downside, Makoto agrees, which triggers the pact ceremony. With both Shen and Makoto glowing, Shen realizes that Makoto is too powerful, forming a 80-20 pact, in Makoto's favor. Out of nowhere, Shen suddenly transforms into a gorgeous woman. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and comment.